This is the brand new Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. I've actually been testing this for a couple weeks, but only now am I just opening the production model. We'll talk more about that later because that kind of sounds weird. But let's dive into what makes this thing tick and what makes it completely different than every Bamboo Lab printer they've put out so far. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So as mentioned, this is the brand new Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. Actually, this is the A1 Mini Combo. That's right, when you hear Bamboo Lab and Combo in the same sentence, that means this thing has an AMS and multicolor support. That's so freaking awesome for the form factor of this. I, I actually really love it. But this is a box that I literally just cut the top open. I have not opened yet, but we're gonna do that now. So in the top of the box, you can see in Bamboo Lamp fashion, it comes sealed in plastic and all of the good stuff sits right in the top. So we are gonna pop that out before I do anything. Come on. Okay, it's in the box pretty good. It's coming. <laughs> there we go. It all comes kind of packaged nicely like they have done. They are very good about packaging their products. If we slowly take the top off like that, you'll notice that we have a couple of different build surfaces, uh, build plates. Also in the top, we have some more parts. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And in this, this is where the magic happens. So we're gonna just slowly pull some parts out. This is our AMS stand. This is the brand new AMS light. I think I got everything out, yep. Ow. And uh, we'll talk about this coming up as well. It goes on like that, there we go. They're actually numbered on this model, one, two, three, four. There we go. Talk more about that in a minute. Another box in the box, we're gonna set it right there. We got some more uh, foam. And this one definitely looks different than the other one. Uh, we'll talk about the other one in a minute. That's right, I actually got two of these, which is pretty dang cool. And I'll explain, I'll explain, just, just bear with me. Um, we got the uh, little spool holder. And as you can see, this thing looks like a mini. It, it is a bed slinger. Um, it has uh, a little tiny bit of, of filament right here. Um, not a huge fan of that, but uh, also some AMS tubes we're gonna use. We'll slide it off over there. So right now we have the AMS and the machine. We need to put them together. But first we gotta get rid of some of that shipping safety stuff. We'll do that now. The first thing we wanna do is cut the little zip tie that comes wrapped around your hot end. And there's also a piece of foam on the other side here, on this side that you wanna take out. That's the first thing you wanna do. Second, you wanna pop this bad boy around and we're gonna remove the safety lock right here. Like I said, Bamboo Lab is very good about shipping these things um, with, the, with the safety locks and the AMS in the X1 Carbons and the uh, in the P1S with the combo I got. Um, they're just really good about locking everything down for shipping. Um, just making sure, you know, it's not gonna roll, it's not gonna move around. Uh, I like the fact that they don't just count on the foam to hold it still. Would it probably hold it still most of the time? Yeah, probably. But this is much safer. So there are four screws that hold this little black uh, plastic injection molded part in here. And basically it's just a lock for the hot end, it locks it for shipping. You're gonna take out those four screws, two in the front right behind the hot end here, two on the side, and there you go. So we're gonna set those aside and we have now removed the four screws and the zip tie. Also, I'm using a two millimeter T-handle. I love T-handles. They do include the Allen keys in the set, so you can use those too. Next, we're gonna install the wiper assembly and that's pretty easy. It literally slides in on this side of the gantry just like that. And then if we find this box here that comes in the foam, inside of this is everything you need. All of the screw bags, your, your Allen wrenches, um, everything is in there. And the really cool thing about this is they do include basically T-handled uh, Allens. I, I, I love T-handles, so thank you so much for that. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna find the bag of screws that says for the purge wiper right here, it is one screw 
And we're just gonna put that screw in straight up through the bottom. And that one screw sits right here. So that wiper assembly um, does not come out during printing. It's attached, it's good to go, it's solid. Next, I've turned the printer around just like that. And we're gonna install our spool holder just in case you don't wanna use the AMS. It does come with a spool holder and it's a real quick install. You find the bag that's labeled spool holder. It is two little tiny screws. M3 by 12 is what they are. And you screw it right to the back of the machine here. We grab our spool holder just like this. And it goes like that. Spool holder installed. Earlier you saw me put the new AMS light on the AMS light stand. And uh, now we put some screws in it. There's a bag labeled AMS, uh, AMS light stand, sorry. We're gonna take a couple of those screws out. We're gonna grab our T-handles, you guessed it, T-handles. Two on each side. They do give you extras, which is really nice. So we'll just uh, tighten those in and get this thing running. Do, 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 my shroom. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I've lost a screw forever. On to the next part of the AMS. In the foam, it actually comes with these pretty, sp pretty sweet spool holders, and they are colored green on two of them and yellow on the other two. As you can see there, it's kind of hard to see the yellow, but there are uh, green and yellow. And uh, we are gonna pop one green and one yellow on each side. And they're actually, if you can see this, let's see if I can turn this around, you can see yellow and green. So all you have to do is match them. I'm just dropping everything today. All right, all we have to do is match them. So we're gonna slide it on, pop it in just like that. We're gonna do that for all four. So that was our yellow, that's our green. There we go. Now our spool holders right here are good to go. Now we're actually gonna connect these two together. So I am gonna move my A1 Mini right over here. And you're gonna want your spool holder on the right side of your uh, A1 Mini. Then we're gonna grab this bag right here and that has PTFE tubes. And there are two different sizes PTFE tubes. There are 580 uh, millimeter and 700 millimeter PTFE tubes. So you want to make sure you're grabbing the correct ones. The next thing we're, we need to do is we're actually gonna insert these PTFE tubes where they go in the, uh, the hot end, right in the top. Pretty simple. Grab all four and the one you drop on the floor. Woo. So I'm gonna grab a couple of the shorter ones here. And there's a really short one right there. That's gonna be used if you want to just use your spool holder in the back. If you do not have an AMS, you're gonna connect your, your PTFE tube here, right to the front and right to your hot end and you'll be done. If you have the AMS, that's what we're gonna do now. So the idea is we wanna put the two short ones on the ones closest to the hot end. So we're gonna go here and we just push it in nice and tight, just like that. And there's another one down here. So we're gonna push that one in nice and tight. And then we're gonna go to the closest one in the top of the hot end. Now this, this hot end actually has four inputs for your uh, filament. And I will get a close up of that. You will see that, but it does have four. So all four of these are now in the hot end here and in the respective AMS slots or uh, area here, whatever you wanna call that. One, two, three, four is how the filament's gonna go. And they're really, it's great that they're numbered um, because I know in the past we've had, you know, talking about the AMS on the X1 carbons, the P1P, P1S, whatever, it's always from right to left, one, two, three, four, but this is numbered, so you don't have to guess. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is grab the little ring here there is a ring right here and it's kind of hard to see, but you wanna grab the ring right there and we wanna connect everything together. So there is a cable up here and we want to connect all of our stuff together. So I'm gonna grab this one we're gonna pop it in. It does show you in the instructions which way to put these. You want the closest ones on the bottom, the, the long ones on the top, and then it also holds your cable up here 
um, together to those AMS tubes as well. Next, we just need to plug this bad boy in. We are going to unwrap the AMS cable. It sits right in the back right here. And it's a pretty good length. So you don't have to worry about it being too short. And we're gonna plug it into one of the two AMS slots in the side of the machine here. Now, the thing about that, um, I'm not sure why there's two. Kind of makes me excited. Is it possible to do maybe uh, eight colors eventually? I'm not sure. They haven't told me that and I didn't ask, but I know that there are two AMS uh, slots right here that you can plug into. So we just did that. Next, we need to plug in our machine and get it rolling. And that's when the magic happens. First things first, we gotta peel that sweet plastic. That's a brand new touch screen and we're about to see it. I'm gonna flip this power switch in the back of the machine and you see how fast that just booted up. This is a brand, whoa, we got noise, we got sound. <laughs> we got a little music there. This is a brand new uh, touch screen here and we can hit start. And we're gonna walk through. I'm in English, I'm in North America. You can see how fast this thing is. Um, we can check this thing on the Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera real quick. Now the next screen is to connect your printer to your Bamboo Handy app. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but I'm not gonna show you the QR code because I don't want you guys to connect to my printer. I'm gonna jump in the app, I'm gonna scan this QR code, and we're gonna keep moving. Once you go ahead and link your app, you can see here it tells you to make sure that the four screws that we took out earlier out of the lock are removed. We can hit confirm, and now it is ready to go. On a screen itself, it shows you that we are gonna start the calibration. We're gonna go through a vibration calibration and a motor noise calibration that's gonna take about, uh, looks like about 13 minutes total. Um, we're gonna rock it. So I want the motor noise calibration on, and here we go. Now this is the crazy part. So I'm gonna stick my microphone up here so you guys can actually hear this, uh, but this motor noise cancellation is crazy. You just hear it getting quieter and quieter. It's crazy. So what it says it does is it measures the subtle individual differences of each motor for the active noise cancellation algorithm that they've pro programmed in. Uh, I can read that right here, and you can see a progress bar kind of chart right here. So we're going to let this run. It is pretty crazy. And then uh, we are going to check out the speed test next. So we got about four minutes left, as it says right there on the screen. And down here, you can't see it, but it's going through different speeds. It started at 50 millimeters a second. Now we're up to 150 millimeters a second. And uh, it's, it's doing the active motor noise cancellation on each of those speeds. And it's going to start speeding up and speeding up and speeding up. And it's pretty awesome how it does that. So we are currently at 200 millimeters a second. 250, 300, 300. And that's done. Now we're gonna go through a vibration compensation. And this is gonna take about four minutes. It measures the mechanical resonance model of the printer for a vibration compensation. It reduces artifacts caused by acceleration and allows much faster print speed. So it's running up through the frequencies, much like the um, X1 carbons, uh, or pretty much all the other ones do actually. So it's gonna do that now and we'll be back. And just like that, we have calibration complete. We're gonna to touch the screen and it says, we are all set. It is at this point that it will tell you there's new firmware, if there is any. Here we go. When we are all done, this is what the A1 Mini looks like. We have our AMS on the right. Our uh, Bowden tubes come down four into one nozzle here, and this is your hot end. We'll go through these parts in a few minutes, but first, we need to get some filament on this thing and see a print in action, because that's what really matters. Bamboo Lab did send over a couple rolls of filament, one being the PLA Basic green, as you can see here. Uh, to put it on, you literally just push it on to the spool just like that. And then you actually feed it up into the bottom of the AMS. You can push this button. It 
pulls it and you're done. It'll suck the filament all the way in. You can see it kind of right here. And it stopped right now, about right there. Okay. Now I'm gonna load another one on this side over here. I'm just gonna toss it on. It slides right in like that. And uh, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's driving right here. It's feeding right here and it goes up to right there. I'm gonna put one more roll on and that's gonna be the orange Bamboo Lab PLA Basic. And we're gonna put that way over here in slot one. So all three are loaded and it's time to get something printed. Now it's time to print something. So I'm gonna jump back onto this touch screen. Again, it's, it's really good looking, it's responsive, it works. And the first thing I'm gonna print is the Benchy, the speedboat race, they call it here. It is the, a Benchy, it's the speedboat race. It's gonna take about 17 minutes. We're gonna hit next on this screen and I'm gonna choose the color we wanna use. And in this case, slot one, two, three, and four are on your screen and you can actually select which color you wanna use with touch. I actually like that a lot. I'm gonna use the orange because it's easy to see. I'm gonna hit go and now it's time to print our first Benchy. Some keen eyed people might have noticed that I forgot to put my build sheet on. So I'm gonna do that now, there you go. I put the textured PEI sheet right there. So we're heating up our hot end right here. It's gonna pull our orange down in and it's gonna start to purge just like it does on the other Bamboo Lab printers. When it gets all the way in there, it's gonna start purging right into our tray right here. And I can see that it's working because you can see the extruder turning by that right there. So you can see now it's purging right in here. It's gonna push it real hard. And then as soon as that uh, hot end moves, it's going to eject your poop straight off that way. Well, that didn't go well. <laughs> it's right there. It was supposed to shoot it off that way. There we go. Now it, it fell off anyway. So now it's gonna go ahead and do the checks on the bed. It's gonna do the uh, auto leveling. It's gonna do the vibration compensation here. It's gonna walk through that because this thing is gonna be smoking. So it does have a bed leveling built in and it's gonna go down and start touching like kind of like a little three tap deal. So that's in the back, it's gonna wipe like that. So it's gonna sit in the back and this is like little white brushes. They're like a silicone white brushes way, way in the back there. So now it's homing going to come down and home and then it's going to run through a quick series of auto bed leveling and it actually moves pretty fast through this all right we're ready to rock auto bed leveling is done it is pooping right here it should eject that poop off the side like we talked about earlier and then it's just going to jump pretty much straight to the speed benchy. So what this is doing is calibrating the extrusion flow right now is what the screen says. So we can tell all of that right through the hot end now. It shot the poop off. It's gonna drop one little line in the front there like that. And then here we go. So I was gonna let a whole time lapse go of this, but I really don't want to take away how fast this thing is. I am not gonna do a time lapse. I'm gonna show you right now in real time while I'm talking how fast this thing is. It is so fast, it's hard to keep up with the uh, focus there, but there you go. Uh, this thing is, it's just cruising. It is so fast. Again, this is about a 17 minute benchy. We have eight minutes to go, but I wanted to jump in without doing a full time lapse because I was doing that. I was recording the whole thing and then I realized why do time lapse when it's printing this fast and I can just show you in real time how fast this thing is moving. It's printing so fast that you can see your spool move in real time. That's pretty crazy. While our Benchy's printing, I'm gonna show you 
how the AMS is lined up. So this is one, two, three, and four. You can see that there are lights on one, two, and three because we have filament loaded. I don't have filament loaded on four. And you can see that right here, the light is flashing. That tells you which one of the spools uh, or which one of the slots in the AMS, however you want to say it, is actually printing at this time. It does this on the, uh, the full AMS too, but there's a blinking light right here that shows you that number one is currently moving. As we're printing, you can see on the screen here, it does show you in full color what the uh, print is in this case because it came from Bamboo Lab themselves. And there is a light button here, so you can sh turn this little light off and on right here. It, there's a light up on the side of the hot end and I can turn it on and off. It tells you what our temperatures are, what our speeds are. So we're at 100% right now. Um, speed right here, there you go. There is a ludicrous mode. That's 166% apparently. Um, fan speeds, light, your bed. And then if we go back, it shows you right here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with the washout, but it does show you that we're 78% printed and it is rocking and rolling. Now this went back to the main screen when I touched that, that's why it's showing. It's kind of hard to see right there. It says 78%. If I touch that again, it'll take you back to the screen I showed you. It says we have three minutes left in this Benchy and that is the main screen there that shows us the model and the percentage left. Something else I can show you while it's printing is we have the cutter on this side of your hot end and it actually comes over and cuts it right here. So you'll see when it's done, uh, when it wants to retract, it's gonna come over, it's gonna press it against there, which will cut just like the other Bamboo Lab machines. Uh, it'll cut that filament off and let it retract cleanly. So that's pretty cool. It's on the right-hand side and it hits right here to cut. You'll also notice we do have linear rails here. So you see them right there. That means this thing is gonna be smooth and fast. Just take care of them and they're gonna last and rock and roll for you. This is the part where the print is done. We saw the cut happen right there. It's gonna move over, uh, purge out a little bit like that. So it's gonna purge and then retract in. The bed went backwards. There you go. We're moving up here. Bed is gonna present itself and your model is right there on the bed. And you got a nice little song when it's done. On the screen, it does say uh, that it's print complete. You can hit OK or you can hit reprint or you can report flaws down there as well. I'm gonna hit OK. And our Benchy is complete, 17 minutes. If we take a look at it, it looks pretty dang good for a 17-minute uh, Benchy off a stock machine that takes almost no time to put together. I'd say psh, a few minutes or less if you're actually putting this thing together and not filming it. Um, 10 minutes less for sure. But you can see here it is um, very nice. The arches look good. The stack looks really nice. Now let's jump into some of the things that make this thing special. I gotta jump in here real quick before we go over some of the really cool technical specs about this printer. There's some things in the box that I don't wanna forget. Number one is this uh, Bamboo Lab filament swatches box here. This should come with all of them, I think, uh, at least in the beginning. Um, I'm pretty sure they told me that will be coming with all of them. And what that is, is an actual package of swatches of all their filaments or almost all their filaments i believe it's all of them all the different colors um what they look like and they're these little squares kind of like a little keychain kind of things and each one of them says this is abs for instance if i flip to the other side if i flip to the other side this is pla basic and you can kind of see what their colors actually look like before you order the bamboo lab filament i think this is super smart especially because they have their own filament and uh, I love to be able to see all the different colors before I actually purchase them. So nice work on that one, Bamboo Lab. I know they're gonna offer this on their website as well uh, if you don't get one of these machines, but it does come in the box and I love this. The next thing that comes in the box is one of these uh, models. And what this is, is this, th there's a few different versions and I have a couple of them in front of me. This one's a lamp. This one right here is a wireless mouse. And what it is, is the guts of everything you need to make this happen with the exception of the printable parts. It's really cool because it's like a, a surprise project. 
you scan it, you go into Maker World, it'll print straight to your printer from there, and then you use the contents of this box to put it together. Expect some uh, videos coming up with shorts or something of me doing these projects, but this is a really cool idea. I love that they're always doing something fun for us, the consumers. As I mentioned earlier, this printer is pretty much calibrated fully automatically. Uh, you just load the filament in and the printer really does pretty much everything else that you want it to do. As I mentioned earlier, the new hot end actually has a very advanced filament monitoring system. It measures how much filament is being pushed into the nozzle, how much is coming out, how fast the printer's printing, and all of this can tell you if you have tangles, if you have blockages, if the filament runs out. And it's really cool because it even detects slips in the extruder. So it is super user-friendly if you don't want to do anything, no calibration. I mean, this thing is pretty dang awesome. It just does it for you. Another thing I wanna mention is how easy it is to swap the nozzle on the new A1 Mini. This is the nozzle piece here. And all you have to do is come in, unclip a little clip, the nozzle comes out, push the new nozzle in and clip it back in. That's it, no wires, uh, none of the fancy like running the wires up to the board or anything, even though that wasn't hard to do on the other printers, this one makes it that much easier. As we saw a little bit earlier, it does have the active noise cancellation and that really makes a huge difference. When it's running through that and you're next to it, you can hear such a big difference. It's pretty, pretty drastic. So it's pretty cool because this thing could literally be printing right next to you and really pretty much just hear the fans. It actually compensates for a lot of the noise in the machine and it helps this machine print faster with less issue. Now the build area on this is 180 by 180 wide, 180 millimeters. I almost never use the full size of my bed on the other Bamboo Lab printers I have. Matter of fact, I normally only print in the center. Uh, no matter how big that piece is. So this is actually a pretty good size for that. And if you're looking to print stuff that's much larger, you're not gonna buy this machine anyway. So this machine would be great for a person that's printing smaller things. I mean, 180 cubed isn't that bad at all. Also, it would be great for a print farm where you needed to line a bunch of these up and you wanted to knock out a bunch of small parts or something that would fit on this. I mean, Prusa has a Prusa mini print farm this could definitely easily do that. As we saw earlier with that Benchy, this thing is just plain fast. They say it can go up to 500 millimeters a second speed-wise and up to 10,000 millimeters a second squared on the acceleration. I mean, it really rips. All I can say is just like the other Bamboo Lab printers, this thing is fast. Something we've grown to love on the Bamboo Lab printers is the AMS, the automatic material system that we get on the other printers. Well, this one does not disappoint. This is the AMS light. It can hold four colors and I'm telling you, it works very well. It actually is a little bit easier to use than the other AMS because once you load the filament, everything is right here. You don't have to mess around with uh, taking screws out or anything like that if the filament gets broken in one of the Bowden tubes because all you would have to do is pop the tube open. That's it. Grab your filament, pull it out, and put the tube back in. All of the parts are right up top and very easily accessible. As you can see, I printed this three color Flexi factory print that's right on the screen. I sent it right from the screen last night before I left, and it knocked it out. Yes, there's the poop. You know, there's definitely poop, because there's a lot of color changes. Every single layer has colors on this thing. But the really cool thing about that is, it did this very fast because the filament actually sits about right here. It doesn't retract all the way back. It doesn't have to go all the way back to the AMS like my X1 Carbons or my P1S does. It literally goes this far. It sits right there. And when it's ready to change, it drops it back in. It is so fast. So earlier in the video, I said I was testing one for a couple weeks before I actually unboxed this one, the production model. And that would be this one. Bamboo Lab actually sent me one of their prototype printers that they ran through while testing the A1 Mini to get to the final production model. It is super cool that they did this. I actually really like this thing. You can see there's some differences. All of the panels on this are actually clear. So you can see inside, you can see what's happening on the inside of everything. You can see into the front of the hot end, you can see what's happening on the belts, you can see what's happening on below. I mean, pretty much everywhere, 
and that includes the AMS, so you can actually watch everything inside work as well. It is really cool, and I really appreciate Bamboo Lab for sending this one out. Um, it is actually printed very, very well. I'm not sure where this fell in the prototype line, if it was a later model. This one does print a little bit better and is a little bit more refined, but that's to be expected because this was one of the prototypes and I actually have it. I, I love that. Thank you so much, Bamboo Lab, for shooting me over this one right here. I shall call him A1 Mini P for prototype. <laughs> now, the last thing I wanna talk about that kinda goes with all of this is the new Bamboo Maker World. That has been a really cool beta to be testing in. Uh, I load it on my phone and an app and you can actually get it on your PC as well. And it's just so cool. I, I love being able to hold the app, hold my phone and scroll through models and just say, yes, I want this one. And then it'll ask me which printer I wanna send it to. I say, I wanna send it to the A1 Mini or an X1 Carbon. Um, and then it asks me, okay, which one do you wanna send it to? And it lists all of my printers. I love that I can do that. I actually find myself, uh, when I have a few extra minutes, just kind of like scrolling through there, looking for some cool stuff to print. And the cool thing about the A1 Mini is it's baked right in. It's right on the screen. You go to your prints and you can actually start looking in Maker World. I mean, that's where the little Flexi Factory um, bear came from here. And I just told it to print right from there. There was no slicing or anything like that. It just did it. Now it does ask you if you want to use your AMS, of course, and what colors you want to use. This is a three color print. The eyes are actually orange, which is kind of creepy, but that's my fault. I meant to make the eyes uh, green and the bear, you know, these parts orange, but I picked them in the wrong order. Uh, but it's really cool to be able to do that. And I find myself playing with that. It does so much more than just that though. So as soon as it releases, jump on there and, and check it out because it's a really cool feature. I think it's gonna be a really good beneficial place for makers. Um, they're crediting everybody. They're making sure everybody gets the credit for the models and it's a very welcome community, I guess you could say. Uh, there's stuff from, you know, Flexi Factory, 3D Print Bunny. I mean, just tons of people on there that you can just select print and shoot it right to your printer. So jump on, check it out as soon as it releases. It's Maker World by Bamboo Lab. So overall, the last couple of weeks with the A1 Mini machines here have been actually really good. Uh, I was surprised when I, when I got this, I did not expect this at all. And I think most people are not expecting this at all, but I really like them. I really like them both. And I printed a ton of stuff on here. I put some stuff out and I'll show it as I'm talking in B-roll, but I mean, the thing is reliable. It prints good. It's fast. And I could easily see this being my brand new go-to recommendation for new people that are into 3D printing. I know I said this last year, Kam Kamikaze Bear. <laughs> you jumped right into the poop. Uh, I know I said this last year when the X1 Carbon came out, but this is the closest thing to out of the box 3D printing, like set it and forget it that I have ever seen yet. And uh, they just keep innovating and they keep bringing out new stuff. Um, I, I definitely am gonna suggest this to new people as their very first 3D printer. At the time of this recording, I don't have the price yet, but they're saying that the price is gonna be very competitive for a machine like this. And I can't wait to see what that is because if the price is low enough, this is gonna be the best beginner machine that you can get to give to somebody, whether you get the AMS light or not. I might even go as far as saying, this is very controversial, that this is the Prusa Mini Killer because of the speed and the price and the everything. So don't quote me on that and don't hate me if you love Prusa. I have a Prusa Mini, it's, it's awesome. But uh, I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> So I tell you what, this is uh, September 20th is today, the day that this will be releasing. If you wanna see one of these in person, come out to the East Coast RepRev Festival in Bel Air, Maryland. I will be the MC, and also if everything goes right, I will be attempting a world record. So come check us out there, and I will make sure to have one of these, or maybe both there, uh, if I can get them out there. Let me know in the comments which one you wanna see, if you wanna see the prototype or the actual production model. Uh, let me know. I'd be interested in what you guys want to see at uh, Earth at the East Coast Rep Rep Festival. And as always, don't forget to check out this video right here. I think you're going to like that one.